<laughs> hey everybody. Um, since I'm posting this publicly, I'll introduce myself really quickly. And then of course my, my beautiful friend and colleague here. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Tina Dietz. I'm the owner and CEO of Twin Flame Studios. And I have been building businesses for many decades internationally, but uh, what me and my company do best is unleash the voices of trusted brands and companies, executives and leaders worldwide. And we do that primarily through audiobooks, podcasting and vocal leadership. And I've decided to go ahead and talk with some of my colleagues live. We have all these conversations that happen in the background. I know all these amazing human beings who are out doing incredible work in the world. And I thought, well, you know what? Why not share some of this awesome uh, with uh, with the world? And today we, you know, uh, Andrea and I here, uh, this is Andrea and Wright from The Boot Factor. And I'll tell you more about her in just a second. But Andrea and I had gotten to talking about uh, the proliferation, the outrageous, you know, number of people claiming to be LinkedIn experts that is happening lately and uh, all the mistakes that people make in their branding and their messaging and how tired we are of certain conversations in the industries that we work in with consulting and coaching and service industry professions. We work a lot with the um, financial industries and with uh, high-end consultants, uh, with um, healthcare organizations, pharmaceutical and uh, and training organizations. So you know it, it, we have all these inside conversations. Now we're bringing it back out to you. And today, what we're talking about primarily is the conversation around engagement. Well, you have to create engagement on social media. And what are you tired of that? I'm tired of this. Buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. It's such a buzzword, right? Okay. And so, um, so let me tell you some more about Andrea before we we get into this. So Andrea has been an entrepreneur since 2002, and um, much like myself, she has a checkered past. <laughs> uh, well, there's fun questions to come. Love it. That's what we call a hook. Um, so. <laughs> Checkered I can't pass. wait to see what my checkered. I know exactly. I <laughs> really, I do. Uh, I guess it depends on who you hang out with, right? It's true. It's true. And it. but she's been working with um, beautifully with coaches, with consultants, a lot of folks coming out of the corporate world, becoming consultants, and helping them to clarify their message. Please, God, clarify your message, and get your message out there uh, in these badass elevator pitches. Making sure that your uh, your LinkedIn profile is I'm going to use a really horrible term on fleek. Um, I. <laughs> That horrible. I hate that term. But but making sure that it is beautiful and pristine and represents exactly who you are. We'll talk a little bit more about how that gets done, uh, because that is an art and a science. And uh, and and she and she's just a really cool person to hang out with. I love her because uh, she's no BS, and that's what we're mostly talking about here. So thank you for joining me here today. We were having some technical issues with Facebook Live, so thanks for hanging with me through that. Good. Thanks, Tina. You're yeah. We're yeah, we're clean our little necklaces, you know, oh, I know. Our zoom. It's like our, it's like the zoom thing, right? Because I'm just yeah, like, it's a like focal point for my shoes. So I'm like, it's all about my necklace, <laughs> right? Necklace Creating nails. a visual focal point, right? Sure. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Do you want me to, yeah. You want, should I talk about what do you want? No, to talk. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I'd love to have you uh, go and dive in. Was there, I'm curious, is what did I miss? In, uh... yeah, I mean, Boot Factor really works with yeah, coaches and executives and really helping people get brave with their brand, basically. Um, and when you get brave, then you get to something called um, what I'm starting to call lead zen, which is getting lead gen without freaking out, <laughs> you know? Yes. Like, without the panic, right? So if you can get to your authentic self and you can get brave and you can show up and get vulnerable and show just a little bit of lack of perfection because nobody wants to see that. We're totally bored with it. We're not interested in a long list of achievements. It's, um, it, and I think here, how about this? This is really what it, it sums up is that most LinkedIn profiles um, start out with like, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Right. Uh, yeah, actually, actually, mine does. I have, I, I know mine's up for uh, an evaluation. That's one of the reasons you and I have been talking, and I haven't updated it yet um, because um, I'm 
intending to have your badassery all over it. Um, right. So that was the way it got done. And, you know, and, and it's the same way with webinars and things like that. Um, you, you know, I speaking from my own experience, um, I've had to talk a number of clients on the vocal leadership side of things to please, please, please tell a human story and don't spend 20 minutes talking about your long list of how perfect your life is before you actually teach anything or share anything or give people any value about why they're there. Right. This, this is, and you know, to, to, to give people credit to not totally throw everyone under the bus, the, it, it, LinkedIn was set up as you know, originally as like this resume place, right? Oh, this sure. Executive job seeking place. And so people are like, oh my gosh, I better put like everything that's amazing about me in a long, boring list, like a play by play, a timeline of your life. And guess what? Nobody cares, right? Yep. I mean, I want this, I please summarize for me because I'm not, I'm not getting past the third line. Yeah. And that's it. We, our attention spans are like that yeah. of a gnat these for the most part pretty much online these days you know um yeah. and um well, oh, oh, here's here's one of my other favorites and and sorry guys we're not trying to th you know, totally throw you on the bus here if you have any of these things it's okay we're all human it's a good yeah. time but you know how about how about this this post <laughs> it's true it's true it's i think people get really self-conscious about how like, well, how am i supposed to look right what's my right. how do i look so i look you know, how about this? This is a good one too, which is not good either. And I guess the bottom line- I, My old picture actually was this. Oh, yeah. right, right. No, it, totally. it can be okay. If you're looking authentic, if your teeth are showing, if you're smiling, if your face is taking 60% up 60 of the frame. Yes, please. Right? Like you're good. I don't care what you're doing. And like, I wish I was just doing this sometimes because that would be so much more interesting. Um, but, but yeah, there is a pose, a perfection about it. And people are just not interested in that. And now it's going from like resume to resource. Like how can you be of value? Ooh, yes. Okay. From resume to resource. Let's, yeah, let's talk. Let's, yeah. let's see let's how, how we can do that. So my, we've been doing some different things on, on LinkedIn, um, mm -hmm. this year and really doubling down on using LinkedIn. I think this is, you know, we've been using LinkedIn a lot in the background and now it's kind of having a resurgence. I think for a long time, LinkedIn was a bit of the redheaded stepchild of the social, social media, media work. Yeah. yeah. And, and now it's having a resurgence because so many more companies, you know, we're business to business mm -hmm. companies and us marketing high-end services on Facebook does not work. Same with, same with Twitter. No, forget it. No, you know, my, my, yes, it's noise. It's just yeah. noise. So we've been having a lot of a tremendous um, engagement, hopefully enchantment. We'll shall see um, with folks and getting tremendous reach on our posts, sometimes up to 65, 70,000 people seeing our posts, but it is takes a lot of time to craft these messages and get things out there. And fortunately, I have a fabulous team and, and they're really helping to repurpose content, get things out there uh, every day on a regular basis. Um, but you know, where do you think people should start? Do you start with the content? Do you start with your profile? Chicken egg. You know, I, I want to talk to the posting a bit because I think there's a big shift that needs to happen with the posting. Yeah. But the profile is really where you start. I mean, that's and that's where you should start with anything. So if you are, you know, high end coach, executive, turn consultant, speaker, author, people are googling you, they're finding you. Please start with your profile, right, and turn that into a resource um, instead of a resume, right? So how can you give a soft sell and create thought leadership? and give them something that they can use in their meeting today at three o'clock. And this is just, this is amazing, right? This is what this does is it makes them think, oh, wow, she knows what she's talking about. And oh, wow, I'm going to call her anyway, right? They're, they're not going to go implement your shit with, with this three tips that you give them, right? They're not, right? Nope. If they're serious, they're going to call you. And so this is really just, it's giving, it's giving stuff away and being okay with that. It's yeah. really serving instead of selling. Serving instead of selling that, that really is, is the key, you know? Um, and I think that it's also important if that feels like a foreign concept 
for people, you know, because every so often, you know, most of the people that we work with are heavily service oriented, heavily relationship oriented. They're used to doing a lot of business, what we would call belly to belly, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you, how do you, you know, I think a lot of folks tra have a difficulty translating that to online, it's particularly our podcasting clients, yeah. right? So we work with a lot of folks who are very high touch, very white glove, um, you know, wealth managers and, and consultants who really spend a lot of time cultivating relationships with their clients. So when you go into a social media situation, it kind of feels sometimes to them, um, not only like the wild west, but like a foreign entity, like a different right. language they have to speak. So can exactly. you, how, how do you actually get more, you know, we talked about being vulnerable. We talk about being authentic, but you know, for somebody who's having these long conversations with people, yeah. how does that translate? Right. And so I think he, here it is, right. And, and really this has been a perfect segue because of zoom, right. Because of having to switch to zoom. So people are yeah. like, I can't meet my clients face to face. I can't give them this, this custom thing. How do I do this? And um, really, I kind of, I think it used to be building a LinkedIn profile to get people to know, like, and trust you. Yes. And, Classic. And that was, you know, that's like, you know, Dale Car Carnegie. It's just like, okay, how can I get, get those people in, right? But now it has to be these three things, I believe, these three pillars, which are mine, is translate, educate, and enchant. Right, so we translate that message. And the biggest way we do that is we, because we're not face-to-face -face with them and we can't see, we can't go off their cues, right? We, we're right. not in real time. Um, we, we have to translate that message and we have to think about things. How can I think of it in terms of how they're thinking about it, right? Not how right. I'm thinking about selling it because nobody wants to be sold to. How can no. I think in terms of them receiving it? What is their pain? What's keeping them up at night? what is the wound that they have that they can that they cannot get past right like how what is hurting and what will then you know make them think of that message in a translated way so translate is really that first one and do you want me to keep going we're going to get into the engagement well let, yeah no let's let's go back and forth a little bit i love how your message is being backed up by this ethereal chimes in the background of music <laughs> it's beautiful i'm just like she's she's I delivering swear. the fairy uh, wisdom uh, alarm is going off and i <laughs> um <laughs> welcome to the zen cafe where we're dispensing tea and business wisdom <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, was of, I was part of the. Um, it's part of the atmosphere. Part of the effect. It's right. It's right. It's the subliminal. Thank you. We're, we're using vibrational oh, medicine to embed the friend. message. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We can talk about that on the audio side of things for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, well, yeah, translate very, very important there, and. Um, so here's the other thing. Um, you mentioned something we talk about a lot in marketing on the marketing things, which is pain points. And I personally am I'm pretty uncomfortable with with ter the terminology of, of that because and, and a lot of my clients are as well. So I want to translate that piece mm -hmm. as well because classic we do talk about pain points and identifying their pain or their wound and things like that. Mm -hmm. I want to counter offer something here and yeah. say, you know, it might not be something that keeps people up at night, but what, you know, what's, what's the itch they can't seem to scratch or, you know, what do they have questions about? What are they curious about? You know, it really is all about putting yourself in the other person's shoes and your client, you know, mm -hmm. my clients are doing well, right? They're doing well for themselves. They're really out there helping other people, but if I were to talk with them and say, you know, you have to have a podcast or everything's going to hell, you know, it, that's yeah. never going to happen. Okay. Right? So, and what comes to mind for me when you talk about that is and it's a great point. Um, I think pain point can matter. And yeah. two things come to mind. One is that I recently like redefined for me, the definition of bra redefined brave, right? Because mm -hmm. brave used to be like, well, get being scared and doing it anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? That's really not good advice for a teenager who's just about to enter. Like, yeah, it, it's a little world. bit, a little bit psychopathic on occasion. Right. Yeah, like, oh, you're afraid, but keep going. Right. So instead, it's like it's kind of this. I think it's this inner knowing or this inner voice. And I think a lot of my clients, they 
like it hurts not that bad, but they know that something's off. They yeah. know that they haven't tended to something. They know there's a voice that's, that they're hearing these whispers, right? So I think when you have that inner knowing, you that also moves you into that brave position and into that position where you're like, look, I've got to change. I've got to change something. Like I have, I have to go that extra step. Does that make sense? You know, I and it makes total sense. I had a, a, a really important turning point in my life a couple of years ago where I realized that I had this background mantra of, I'm fine, it'll be fine. I'm fine, it'll be fine. And that's a really good thing if you're just kind of looking to evaluate something and truly let it go. But I realized that I had spent a lot of my life talking myself into things being fine when they weren't fine. Right. Right. And so if I think it's important if you find if you are listening to this right now, if you're watching this right now and you hear yourself talking, trying to talk yourself into something that it'll be fine, it'll work out, it'll be, that might, there's a red flag. That's a great point. And I, and I think that leads me to really to this fear abundance, yeah. um, goal, right? where I really, when I'm talking Here's to people, when I'm yeah, helping them like establish that their brand and they're wanting to sell and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to outlaw it, but let's try not to move from a position. Let's try not to like wrangle our clients, our potential clients into a position of fear. <laughs> like, oh my God, if I don't do this, things are going to be over. Right. Yes. You want to instill that kind of fear. I want to, I, I really want to get them out of the trance of scarcity and toward a mindset of abundance, right? Like there is more, there can be more, right? I, you can find more. And so I, I think that's important as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more on that. I couldn't agree more. Um, so, what are some of the other things that you tend to see? Um, and we'll stick with Facebook or Facebook. We'll stick with LinkedIn for right now because it's a good focal point for us to to look at, um, especially if we're considering that kind of how you do one thing is how you do everything. Um, and it is a place where we're we're focusing on showcasing ourselves as well as our businesses. Who are you as an individual, as a leader, as a CEO, as a consultant or all of those. And, you know, but, but truly we're not looking at business pages or company pages the same way we tend to look at individual profiles. Exactly. So let's, um, where do, what are you seeing that people are uh, missing the mark? Yeah. On this. So a couple, couple things. One is they're thinking of themselves very firmly attached to the job that they currently have. Mm -hmm. um, and when you do that, then that job ends and then you're like, well, shit, where am I now? Right. So what we have to do on LinkedIn and with a personal brand is really talk about yourself and brand yourself in a way that is connected, but independent of your job. Right. So and then when you're moving on, when you're moving up, when you're moving over, those skills are gonna much more easily translate, right? So I see people describing what they do in their, in their job instead of what they do, you know, in, in I guess around their job, right? And for, for the company, yeah. right? So it's task oriented instead of like outcome oriented, right? So that I think it's, it's definitely seeing that as a mistake. That's a really, that's a really important um, folk point. And I, I wanna, build on to what you're saying, because um, on the podcasting side of things, we often work with folks who are emerging in mm -hmm. their thought leadership, in their, um, in their vocal leadership, in their messaging. And we see the same thing. We see yeah. folks who are, um, they may be like, I have a client mm -hmm. right now, actually, who is still firmly ensconced in the corporate world, does a great job there, been there for 15 years, but he has a whole other company that he's been developing on the side. Yeah. So the dance he has to dance is in speaking broadly about who he is, what he stands for, what his values are, and rather than a lot of how to, or, yeah. you know, the, any kind of pitching or things like that. And that's a, that's a real mindset shift. It, it really is. And yeah. And I've seen, I've seen people do that though. You really can go from like, well, what am I really bringing to the table at this, at, at, you know, what am I bringing to the table in my, on my, the board position I have in my company, in my side business, right? Why am I valued? Right. And then, you know, then going from there, we see that people are putting their positions, right? They're just treating yeah. it as a resume, right? It's, I, instead of a headline at the top, I see a position and it really, in my opinion, should be a headline. It should be who you help what you actually give, not advice, you give peace of mind, right? 
not a massage. You give relaxation, right? Like translate what you do into what people are really getting and try to lead with that, right? I don't, positions mean less, less than they ever have, right? Because they hand out positions because they can't pay you more sometimes, right? I mean, like, <laughs> Isn't that true? I mean, you know, you get, you know, VP matters, of course, like, you know, your executive title does matter, but that doesn't really tell me how you're any different from the other VP, right? And so you can have your position, but then I want to know more. I want to really know the hard skill and the soft skill of, of what you're bringing to the table. And I want to give a shout out to a lot of, you know, what I've learned is from my LinkedIn coach, Ellen Malcolm-Moore. She's amazing. Like, and I just, you know, I really want to, she, she, she really has, um, helps shift my mindset on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, that's been huge. It is really a mindset shift. You know, one of the other things that just occurred to me is that um, the concept of elevator pitches, which is something you work a lot with as well. Yeah. How does that interact with something like LinkedIn or does it at all? So I think it really does. And um, the thing is you have to remember that it's all about context, right? So when I'm sitting next to someone on a plane in my non COVID life, I need to have an elevator pitch that is a hook, you know, it, and it's just enough for someone to turn their head and say, hmm, tell me more, right? right? Or if I'm in a networking event or if I'm on a Zoom call. But on a LinkedIn page, it's much different, right? We've got this scroll, we've got someone's clicking, we've got someone distracted by their other tabs. And so we have to go in these little bits, right? And they're going to scan. So I do think the elevator pitch absolutely should be woven in to the, right. link, the, the LinkedIn profile, but I would, to be honest, I would, I would try to squeeze in some of those LinkedIn, or I'm sorry, those elevator, um, like the words I'd usually use into your headline. That's, that's where I'd put them first, because that once you get into your about, it's, it's a much different, uh, a much different formula. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. So then coming back to our original topic yeah. of this idea of going from engagement to enchantment, what do you think right. the difference is between the two? You know, because we yeah. see a lot of, we get a lot of engagement on things, but whether somebody leaves enchanted or not, yeah, you know, our customers or clients certainly do, but what about interactions kind of out uh, in the world on a daily basis? Yeah. And so there's a few things we can do to do this. So engagement is just like, Hey, I'm paying attention. Right. Which is what we mm -hmm. want everyone to do. It is the, to me, it's like the bare minimum of having a conversation. Is someone paying attention to me? Okay. I'll keep talking. Right. Which to be honest, I'm not super comfortable doing. I don't, if they're, if they're just going to like, you know, stand there and keep talking just cause, okay, I got their attention. I, I want more. Right. <laughs> and yeah. so that's just not enough. And so to really create what I call enchantment is we are going to take them by the hand and lead them down a journey. We are going to look them directly in the eye and create an intimate conversation. We are going to make them feel as though we are talking directly to them, right? <clears throat> and we do that by getting human, by using human phrases, by really resonating with not just their head, but also their heart Yeah. Really, and, and getting vulnerable. And most people are, the, why this is hard is that it's, it's scary to be vulnerable. People, people are a little afraid to put themselves out there, right? And they're also very afraid to be specific, right? To really talk to that one target audience person that you want to reach. Right, right. That, that idea of, well, if I niche down, I might miss someone, something. Oh and that's God. another indication of that your mindset may be a little less than abundant, perhaps. And that's well, okay. You know, yeah. we, 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 we all, we all do this, right? Like we hit yeah. these walls, we hit these ceilings of everything that we do. And I think this is also a really good place to remind people that you don't constantly have to be telling a deeply intimate personal story. You can just tell a story. This is the storytelling portion of things. And, and it's not once upon a time necessarily, but this whole idea of creating intimacy and creating connection and creating authentic uh, heart centered, you know, uh, alignment with, with another human being is we just yeah. connect them, uh, them with these little stories. We're all wired for story. I would say even too, storytelling has become such a buzzword. The problem is that not everybody's good at telling a story. And so, and that's okay. Not everyone's a storyteller. And so the trick I feel like it, one trick is, um, is to 
remember they it, like you said it doesn't have to be vulnerable so for example in in my uh in my profile i used to say something like um there's nothing i love more than mining you for your magic and building you a brave brand and then i say except maybe chips and salsa but otherwise you're number one <laughs> right i know like it just gets a giggle right it's it's, it's right just, sharing something about me that's not vulnerable or secret or anything. I just like chips and salsa, <laughs> but it makes me like a human instead of a company and people just, they just respond to that, you know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Another point in your bio, you say, you know, you, you speak to audience, speak and sometimes swear in front of audiences. I, you know, and I do the same thing, right? The little bit of human internal conversation that we're all, you know, we have our, our, these little moments yeah. that, um, that create connection and, and create this sense of, oh, I know you. Right. Like, oh, I know you, you're like yeah. my neighbor. Oh, I know you, you're like my daughter. You know, like yeah. there's this, yeah, there's a resonance there. And, yeah. um, I think you really, you hit it too with the, this, there is that storytelling, but it doesn't have to be much. And, and I think people, no. think, oh, I've got to tell this long story. No. And, yeah. No, no. It was we're just working with this absolutely brilliant chiropractor. He's invented this incredible machine to help people with low back pain. Mm -hmm. And he's an older gentleman and credentials out the yin yang. And he's about to be on his first podcast. But the question that always gets asked in the beginning of a podcast, notice I didn't ask it is, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself or tell me what brought you to this place or tell me about your journey. I hate that question. Uh -huh. Um, it's a, it's a lazy question on the part of the host. Sorry, guys, it is. And it mm -hmm. is kind of boring to the audience because everyone answers it the same way. They always answer it once upon a time. Well, I lived in a small town and I grew up and I got this degree and I started in this job. And, mm -hmm. and, so and once upon a time stories, we're already our program to go to sleep when we hear once upon a time. This is a good point. Right? Bedtime. So all we did was have him say the main thing that he spent his whole life doing. What's the main thing that you spend your time doing? What's the main thing, the outcome they reach? He goes, I've spent my entire career reducing people's pain and suffering without drugs or surgery. And it was actually back when I was in high school as a 90 pound weakling on a football team. And you know, people are like, what? what? I mean, like it's a 180 to do something. They told this beautiful little story now he's just a dude you're hanging out with coffee with telling you a story and by the end of that very short story i might add of how he kind of discovered the possibility of chiropractic through a high school injury um everyone's like oh, i love you right <laughs> it's true it, it is true and it the thing is you have to be kind of aware enough and what's a good a great exercise to get you to this is just asking yourself like five or 10 questions that I, I include in my boot kicking brain questionnaire. It's like, oh, what cool. do you believe about work? What do you believe about humans? What do you, you know, I mean, just those two, right? Like some things come up, right? Um, you journal on that for a month. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's my journal? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're like writing prompts, right? It, it just, mm -hmm. you just have to answer those rather than where was I born, right? Like what's, what do you do really well? Like what's most important to you? You know, and I like to ask little silly things too, like, you know, what's, what's on your nightstand? What, what do you, um, what do you like? What's your favorite, you know, favorite food? Um, what could you not live without? Not your phone. Um, <laughs> it gets into people's habits, you know, and, and anyway, so, so that's really about digging and kind of really trying to show up in just this little way on your profile. All right, cool. Well, let's get some people hooked up here with uh, connecting with us further. So the best place, uh, Andrea, for everyone to reach you is at thebootfactor.com. Is that where we want people to go and check things out? That's right. You can go there, um, sign up with my um, my scheduler. It's right on the front page. And if you go there, you'll get and, and mention the podcast. If you hear, or sorry, if mention the uh, the Facebook Live. Whatever this is. Yeah. Get, sorry, <laughs> and podcast. <laughs> if it's, um, you'll get a 20 minute free uh, LinkedIn lowdown session with me. And I'm telling you, even, you know, we're going to have fun. Like, really Oh, I've done it with you. It's very enlightening. I don't, yeah. I don't do anything without like having a little bit of, a little bit of moxie, a little bit of craziness. Um, yeah. So, and, it, and you really will get some, some really quick answers that you can shift. Excellent. Your
Kick ass. So go to the boot fact, literally uh, go to the boot factor.com schedule uh, a 20 minute uh, LinkedIn conversation. Um, it really is enlightening. I've done this with Andrea and um, she really will kick your ass in the most beautiful and loving way. And, and you need that. I know, you know, you need that. Uh, and then if you want to um, connect further with me and with Twin Flames Studios, go to Twin Flames Studios, so many S's, dot com and uh, check out what we do there. Check out our audio library of podcasts and audiobooks. And uh, also feel free to reach out on our contact page anytime. And you can find us all over the social media networks, the internets, as it were um under our under our names because we have done the work and we show up on google <laughs> so there it is so hey andrea thanks for joining me from uh are you in denver today yeah denver. yeah thanks for joining me from the mountains i am in the flat flat land of florida and uh as we have this cross-continental conversation in the time of covid oh and then uh thanks everyone for joining us Got questions, leave a comment and we'll talk to y'all soon. Yeah.